Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. I am the Renegade of Wrestling, J.J. Williams. I am, I guess you could kind of say on vacation up here in West Hills, California. I am here once again to answer your viewer submitted questions. Another WrestleMania themed edition. Um, let's get started. Kirby Shadis has two questions for me today, both WrestleMania themed. He says, hey JJ, including this WrestleMania and the last two, all the gimmick matches have featured Triple H. Do you believe on paper Triple H books himself to steal, to steal the show? And is there any other match on this WrestleMania card that deserves a stipulation? And what type of stipulation would you book? Thanks for answering my question. Um, I do think Triple H tries a little bit to book himself to steal the show. The problem is, he doesn't. Triple H's time has passed. He is a novelty act at best these days, a la The Undertaker, a la The Rock. He just needs to deal with the fact that he's not the main draw anymore. Um, is there a match on this card that deserves a stipulation? Um, it would be really easy to say that Punk Taker deserves a stipulation, especially the route that they've been going, um, bringing Paul Bearer's passing and the urn into the storylines. What type of stipulation would I book for it? Hell in a Cell would be too easy, especially after just having Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell last match last year. Um, Last Man Standing would be a pretty good one for those two. Just possibilities. What do you think? What would be a good stipulation for Undertaker versus Punk at WrestleMania? Let me know, and I might just mention it on Friday's show. Kirby also asked, what are my top five WrestleMania matches that never happened? Mm. Not including matches like Undertaker vs. Sting, but matches like Hogan vs. Flair. Well, that's one right there. Hogan Flair is definitely one that never happened that should have happened. Um, Austin vs. Undertaker, I think definitely could have happened. Um, Rock versus Undertaker is something that definitely could have happened. Um, Triple H versus The Rock. They had a long storied rivalry and feud and the best we got at Mania was the McMahon in every corner at WrestleMania 2000. And this one might be met with a little bit of skepticism but hot off of the heels of Buried Alive, I would say Taker versus Barrett. The Nexus helped Taker get buried, and then by the time Mania had come around, Nexus had broken up, we had the new Nexus and the core. Instead of putting the core in that shitty ass match that they had, I'd have had Undertaker versus Wade Barrett. Okay, motherfucker, you want to come and try and bury me, I'm going to take you to school. And Price, speaking of The Undertaker, do you think the character of The Undertaker cares about the street? If he's a dead man, why would he care about a street? I don't. I really don't think that the character of The Undertaker really gives a shit about the street. And I'm hoping that point will be proven at WrestleMania. Um, I think Mark Calloway cares a little bit more about the streak than The Undertaker does because that's a big part of Mark Calloway's legacy in the business, is his WrestleMania streak. But The Taker, The Demon of Death Valley, The Phenom, I don't think he really cares. And one more Undertaker question from Daniel Luntz. If Undertaker had wrestled at WrestleMania 10 and WrestleMania 2000, who do you think his opponents would have been, or who would you have wanted to see him wrestle? 
WrestleMania 10, after his failed attempt to win the WWF Championship, I would have had Taker versus Luger. That way both Brett and Luger would have had to wrestle twice. Luger had the opportunity of having his match earlier in the night, so Taker Luger could have been like semi-main right before Brett finally won the title back. And at WrestleMania 2000, I would have probably done Taker versus Rock. Rock didn't need to be in that fatal four-way match. That match needed to just be Triple H and Foley at the end of the day. Rock and Big Show both had no reason to be in there. So have Rock versus Taker. And dare I say, the streak could have very well ended at WrestleMania 2000 with the way Rocky was getting booked and pushed. Let's see here, I need to scroll down and do my mouse to work there. Truthic31 has three WrestleMania questions for me, and a couple of them are multi-partners, so this is going to be the last question for today. First part, what are your top three manias of all time or your personal favorites? Number three, WrestleMania X7. Number two, WrestleMania 10. And number one, in my opinion, and I've taken a general consensus of the Casa D18 Studios over the years, in basically all our opinions, the last great WrestleMania, WrestleMania 20. That is my number one favorite WrestleMania of all time. That pay-per-view from start to finish was awesome. You can argue me, Goldberg Lesnar, but even as shatastic as that match was, the crowd made that match because they knew what the fuck was going on and they weren't happy. Lesnar getting rattled helped make that match. Goldberg helping keep Lesnar in check helped make that match. And Austin stunned the shit out of everybody at the end, totally put the match over. Word to the wise, WWE, when your referee is more over than the two competitors, you have a problem. The WrestleMania 20 is my number one favorite Mania of all time. Start to finish, not a bad match. Part 2 of Crew Thick 31. What are the top three matches, in my opinion, from WrestleMania's 1 through 10, then from 11 to 20, and then from 21 through 28? First part, from WrestleMania 1 through 10, number three, Piper versus Brett. I want to say that was WrestleMania 8. Number two, from WrestleMania 3, Savage Steamboat. And number one, in my opinion, the best match from WrestleMania's 1 through 10, from WrestleMania 10, Brett versus Owen. From 11 through 20, number three, the Iron Man match from WrestleMania 12. Number two, from WrestleMania 20, Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero. And number one, also from WrestleMania 20, Triple H versus Shawn Michaels versus Chris Benoit. From 21 through 28, I have to say, this one was the hardest part for me because 21 through 28 have been pretty bad. There have been high spots on all the cards, but overall, for the greatest show of the year, they haven't been very well rounded. Number three from WrestleMania 23, John Cena versus HBK. Number two from WrestleMania 21, Kurt Angle versus HBK. And number one from last year, Hell in a Cell, Triple H and Taker. 
know Jeff has said numerous times, both on After the Bell as well as on his new shows, he was in tears watching that Hell in a Cell match. Everybody in the Casa was on the edge of their seats, especially after Sean super kicked Taker. We all thought, oh fuck, it's over right here. It wasn't. The match continued. We all know how it turned out. And the third part from Truth Deck 31. When you think of WrestleMania's past, what three things, they could be moments, matches, or promos, are the first things that come to your mind? Number three, WrestleMania 15, the brood descending from the rafters to the top of the hill in a cell and hanging the big boss man. Number two, WrestleMania 12, Shawn Michaels and the zip line entrance. And number one, for WrestleMania 20, post match, Eddie and Benoit hugging in the middle of the ring. Those are the three moments that instantly come to my mind when I think about WrestleMania's past. That's it for this Monday edition of Renegade Wrestling. I hope you have enjoyed it. I will be back again later today with my own solo thoughts of what's going to go down at WrestleMania. And then be on the lookout a little bit later in the week for a big roundtable featuring some of us from the CASA and possibly a couple of outsiders. We haven't quite locked that in yet, but be on the lookout for that either Friday or Saturday, the round table. And until next time, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time right here from the CASA D18 Studios channel.